you for the lives of your children, Lord. We ask you for a divine visitation in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch your children, Lord. Visit them in a mighty way, Lord. Let them experience your love, your favor tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Reporting Father, in progress. we thank you because when we pray, Lord, you hear us, Lord. I thank you because when I pray, Lord, you hear me. Rada skitela shaskatalaha. Thank you for your divine visitation tonight, Lord. Thank you for visiting your children, Lord, giving them grace tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you for favor, Lord, that you should transform the lives of your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, every setback, let it break tonight. So I'm talking about the beast, the mark of the beast, 666, 666 demystifying the number 666 so my topic is going to be very deep today i want you to go as deep as you can with me because i know god is going to bless you demystifying the mark of the beast 666 so if you have to keep yourself up keep yourself up because god wants to do something tonight open up your heart invite somebody who you know is coming to your spirit because there's no distance in the spirit so we are this demystifying this word the best way we can and i know god is going to bless you tonight in the mighty name of jesus as you see here online right here god bless you god bless you may god increase you uh god increase you mahara does here tonight there's going to be deliverance if you believe god can do it god will do it if you don't believe uh then it's a matter of your faith. It is a matter of faith tonight. So invite somebody, and tell them that God wants to do something great tonight. Something powerful is happening tonight. And uh, in this live stream, there's going to be healing. There's going to be healing. There's going to be deliverance. There's going to be direction. There's going to be revelation. Demystifying the beast. Demystifying the mark. It's a triple six, triple six. Why is it triple six? Demystifying the mark of the beast. So I'm, I'm teaching as the spirit of God leads me. And some of you, God is going to visit you. God will touch you in a deeper way than ever. And I do believe like nothing can stop what God has already begun in your life. Nothing, nobody, any ordinance, any writing written in the realms of the spirit, any evil and writing, that has been written against you. It is completely terminated. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Enchantment terminated. In the name of Jesus. I speak life tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. That when this word comes to you. God will reveal to you deeper realms. Deeper realms. You know you shall know the truth. The Bible says. And the truth shall set you free. I declare and decree this night. I prophesy to you. I prophesy to you as you're watching me this night. God is going to show you deep things. The more the knowledge you have, the more God is able to entrust you. You see, God entrusts those who have his knowledge. You know, the Bible says he reveals his secrets to his beloved. He reveals his secrets to his beloved, not just to everybody. To those who love him, you know, uh, draw nigher to me, I'll draw nigher to you. You know, so the closer you are to God, uh, the more you experience his presence. So I'm talking about the system of the beast, 666. And and this is a very uh, deep topic and, and it's in eschatology. And uh, different people, different Bible scholars have taught it in a different way. Different dogmas, but... Uh, today we are going to flow with the spirit and I'll talk about major, major things that are happening because we got to know that uh, what's happening in this time that we're living in because the spirit of God quickened me and he said talk about the end times and what is happening and, and you could find yourself having a little bit of resistance. You're like, wait a minute, why do I try to move or I try certain things? It seems like doors are locked for me, you know. Um, there's a spirit in this end time that is being re released, which I call the Antichrist spirit. A strong 
and, 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 and you know, it's Bible prophecy. It will manifest. You, we cannot stop what was prophesied. It will manifest. Uh, the Bible talks about a time where there's going to be a beast rising, you know, and the false prophet. And these things are foretold in the book of Apocalypse, in the book of Matthew, in the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Thessalonians. It talks about it. Daniel chapter 12, it talks about this time, a time like this, whereby people will be seeking knowledge back and forth, flying, looking for knowledge. You know, being dissatisfied, being discontent. But we know today that God is going to do something by the authority of the Holy Ghost. Mm. God will deliver you from whatever, whatsoever, has tried to blind you. To blind you. Because one of the uh, things that the enemy uses is, um, is, um, is major things. I, I want to basically talk about a couple of things the Spirit of God has put in my heart today, like topics that I want to cover. I want to talk about, um, you know, I want to talk about deep things. Eh? When I say deep, I mean what's happening currently in the world. Uh, well, number one, I want to talk about population control. I want to flow with the spirit and talk about population control. Population control. Number two, uh, um, I want to flow. I want to flow. I want to talk deep and uh, I want the Lord to allow me to talk about these things the best way and the second thing is social media i want to talk about social media what does social media play in these end times what does social media have to do with what we are going through in these end times number one population control number two social media i want the lord to allow me and i want you to pray that god opens your ears and your spiritual eyes for you to see what's happening you wonder why are you finding yourself in a place of stagnancy? Is this just stagnancy or is there, is there an end time spirit? An end time spirit, an antichrist spirit that has been released. That has been released. Why are believers going through tribulation? You're a believer watching me. Why are you going through tribulation? Over and over, you try to do certain things. There seem to be a resistance you cannot even explain. But after this, tonight, God will set you free. Uh, there's going to be deliverance online. And I know whatever you are, God is going to locate you and change what no man, no man can change. God is going to remove a situation that's not supposed to be in your life. This is a prophecy after this teaching. There are decisions you're going to make that are spirit-led, not logical. Logically, like using your logic. You will not make decisions based on your logic. You will make decisions based on the spiritual revelation. Revelation that God has put in your life. Be it in business, be it in whatever is coming. Now, we are living in an apocalyptic moment. I repeat this again. There is a difference of having a job and working. The Bible talks about working. And it doesn't talk about a job. A job is what you are given or what you get. But working, it talks about working. Working and a job is different. In these end times, God is releasing end time ideas and revelations of even business, of even uh, businesses that some of you will be working in, be it real estate, be it um, investing, whatever it is, God will, will speed. Uh, there's a speeding anointing and Revelation of knowing where to, to plant your seed, be it your business, your own business. God will establish you in these end times. You're not going to be bound by the systems of this world which are already collapsing. The systems of this world are already collapsing. And Christ Jesus, like I said again, the rapture. We've heard of the topic, the rapture, the second coming of Jesus. We think about it. We've heard about it. We have joked about it, but it's real. The Lord Jesus is coming back for a bride. You know, uh, I've had dreams, and there are people who've had dreams, and there are people who are still having dreams about the end time, the second coming of Jesus. The second coming, the rapture will be real. It will happen. But before the rapture takes place, the rapture of the church, 
You know what is the rapture? The rapture is 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 the body of Christ. You know how can I break it? It's a time that uh, the Bible foretells. If you can find it in Matthew twenty four, talking about mm, the flight of the believers, whereby a man uh, with his wife will be sleeping on the bed. One will be taken. One will be left. Right. This is basically uh, there's gonna be a sudden. Uh, uh, disappearance of, of 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 people on the globe, you know. People will blame it to UFOs. People will say it's aliens which have come and you know whatever, whatever. Conspiracy theorists will try to say it's the extermination or population control or the government is doing something. But a time like this will come, whereby people will be snatched. Not just people, but a believer. A, 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 not a believer, but. What am I trying to say? Believers, those who are saints, set apart for Christ, a time is coming, they will be snatched. The rapture will take place. I'm a believer of the rapture. And I do believe this is the time that is coming and there's a great falling away already in the church. There's a great falling away. Hallelujah. But before the rapture takes place, I want to teach what the Lord has put in my heart. Tonight, tonight I'm teaching about the system of the beast. The system of the beast. 666. You know, we've heard of uh, 666 and uh, people have given different interpretation of the mark of the beast. You know, a lot of folks back in the year 2000 sold everything. There was a big panic. Everybody thought the year 2000 would be the millennium whereby it will be the end of the world. Some folks even piled up food and there was a crazy panic and nothing happened. The year 2020, 12, Nostradamus prophecy. It was a prophecy of a man, you know, who prophesied. He was a scholar, Bible scholar or rabbi, whatever it is, right? He prophesied in 2012 that it's going to be the end of the world. It's going to be the end of the world. 2012 came, before it came, there are folks who sold their houses, they piled up food. They did all they could gather to wait for 2012. 2012 happened. It came. It passed. Nothing happened. The Bible in Matthew 24 talks about this. They shall rise rumors. You know, there's going to be men who rise, false prophets, with wrong doctrines. Uh, talking about mm, the Lord Jesus being there. You know, if, if, if they tell you he's in the field, don't run there, you know. There shall be many who rise and say, okay, he will come on this day. He'll come on this day, which is, it, it has already come to pass, you know, and more is happening. There's a lot happening in the world. So the end times are real. The end times are real. Now, uh, the spirit of God put it in my heart to say that there is a difference of a job and working. We believers in this end times, I do believe a hundred percent God will not make us rely on jobs for so long. What I believe is God will create work. Work is something you own. Work, you're working with your hands. Paul was a tent maker. He made his own business. He ran his own business. He was a tent maker, working. He had his own business, all right? That, that was his own business. There's a tent anointing. There's a tent maker anointing. Yet he was an apostle, but he had his own tent business where he worked with Aquilas and all of them that helped him right so this is, is going to be called what the Lord put in my heart was basically he gave me a word he said golden business and I said God explain to me what do you mean about golden business he said I, I want you to tell my children about golden business I said golden and then the Lord started speaking to me and telling me that gold is the only commodity that doesn't lose value gold gold always appreciates so when he said golden business he basically said enlighten my children to to get into businesses that don't lose value businesses that always appreciate after every year it adds value like real estate water business there's different type of businesses that never lose value that always add value so he told me like he will enlighten his people because what the system is about to start doing, which is already doing right now, is really handicapping. It's really like imprisoning folks. And it's like a spirit of a hamster. 
wherever you walk, 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 you eat, you walk, walk, walk. It's like you're eating to work for the system. You're eating to work for the system. Your taxes and everything, you're eating to work for the system. Right? But once you have a golden business and you have a revelation from God, you are able to understand what kind of business should I do? What, what should I do that, that will not take away from me, but will multiply? That's the spirit God has given his sons and daughters in these end times. It's a spirit of excellence and a spirit of multiplication. A spirit of excellence and a spirit of multiplication. Receive that as you're watching me. Spirit of excellence and spirit of multiplication. This is what the Lord is saying. So, as I'm dis, dis, uh, demystifying, as I'm demystifying the mark of the beast and the system of the beast, like I said again, to those who are joining me right now, we're living in the end times. I repeat again, I'm demystifying this as the, the best way the Lord can help me. Number one, we are at war in the realms of the spirit and in the physical. In the physical and in the realms of the spirit. Number one, I talked about mm, population control. Number two, mm, I'm talking about um, I'm talking about social media. Number one, population control. Number two, social media. These two things are one of the biggest, they're being used as a weapon. These are being used as, man, the enemy is weaponizing two things. Population control, which is connected to the pharmaceutical companies we have today. Pharmaceutical companies we have today. They're not clean at all. All right? Their agenda is population control. And uh, when I go back to the other point is social media. How is social media playing a big part in the end times in our uh, pharm pharmaceutical companies uh, which is part of population control playing a part in the end time now I, I want us quickly if you have your bible or if you can just flow with me here i'll go quickly to revelation 13. now i'm talking about the beast the mark of the beast because, hey, I've been having visions and dreams. And God kept on telling me the time is nigh. The time is nigh. Son, tell my children. Tell my children the time is nigh. You know? And, and, and I kept on seeing a system in my vision. And this is what God told me. He said, um, read again the book of Revelation 13, 16. So I went and I read. And I'm going to read it to you. And this is what it talks about. It says, and it causeth. All both. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Now I want to read it real quick. As the spirit of God leads me. Alright. I want to read it. And I flow. Revelation 13, 16. It says. And it causeth all both small and great. Rich and poor. Free and bond. To receive a mark on their right hand. Or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, meaning triple six, meaning six, six, six. Let ye who has wisdom. He says calculate the number. Of the beast. Why is he saying let ye who have wisdom. Because you got to know. There is God's. Wisdom and man's wisdom. Now God's wisdom. Is Sophia. When you have Sophia. You are able to. To understand things deeper. Man's wisdom. Is limited to God's wisdom. May you receive Sophia tonight. May you receive Sophia, the anointing of Sophia tonight to understand this. He says, let he who has wisdom, not man's wisdom, 
Because with man's wisdom, you'll say, okay, the mark is 666. You'll try to use knowledge. Okay, maybe it's in a chip. Maybe it's in, uh, in, in the car. There was a time people were saying the mark is uh, behind our, you know, the water. You know, when you go to the store, everybody was saying, there was a time they were saying, oh, the mark is behind. I don't know if you remember a time everybody went crazy. They said, oh, you see, this is the mark of the beast. You scan it, it's the mark. But this is deeper than what we think. Okay? I've read Revelation 13, 16. But I want to go a little bit deeper here. Now, on the time of creation, when we go back to Genesis, now I'm going from Revelation to Genesis. When we go to Genesis, we see the first day when God created, the first thing he created was light. The second thing was the atmosphere, the firmament. The third thing was the dry ground and plants. The fourth thing was the sun and the stars. The fifth thing that, you know, whatever. The fifth was birds and the sea creatures. The sixth, sixth, number six, was land, animals, and humans. Number seven was the Sabbath, which is the Sabbath, which he rested on the Sabbath. Now, he says, let ye who has wisdom calculate the number of the beast. So this is connected to Genesis Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation 13. For you to understand Revelation, you have to go to Genesis. For you to understand the end, you have to understand the beginning. Because think about this. If I plant a mango tree and I put it under the ground, you will expect mango fruits. So everything has a beginning. For you to understand the end, you have to understand the beginning. So that's why I took you back to Genesis. He says his number. Now watch this. On the sixth day, animals and men were created. Animals and men were created. Now, I was sitting down, <laughs> just meditating like this, and immediately I was carried in the realms of Elohim. And suddenly, I had an open vision, and I saw a being standing in front of me, but I cannot call it a man. I cannot say it's a man. I believe it was, this was the presence of God. Because the only thing I could see is the outline. And I saw the number six. So I tried to understand. Like six. Why am I seeing six? And whoever is standing in front of me looks like a man. But it's not a man. Almost like the vision of Daniel. Chapter 10. I'm trying to understand. This is not a man. This is not an angel. It could only be God because his countenance was so much burning, burning like a, like a lantern, a lantern beyond a lantern, just too much fire. And as I looked at the fire that was coming out, I saw the number six and, 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 and a voice started speaking to me, you know, because when you have visions, you don't see lips moving. If an angel visits you uh, or you have an encounter with God, people who have had encounters with God can understand this. Uh, you don't see whoever is talking to you. You don't see their lips moving. But you know they're saying something. So as I looked into this light, I saw the number six. And I understood. And then God said something here in, the, in, in, in Genesis. On the sixth day, if you look carefully, God created man in his own image. If God created man on the sixth day, why, why, why the sixth day? And now when we go to Revelation 13, we see triple six. So it's a mockery. The number triple six is like trying to tell God I'm double who you are. It's like I'm triple who you are. So six is a number of God, not just a number of men. Because God manifests himself in Genesis on the sixth day. And now man is created. Why on the sixth day? Because that's the day he chose. That's the day God chose. For, for, for Adam to be created in his image. God replicated himself through man. So when we see 666, the enemy and the devil has always tried to copy God. That's all he can do. Try to imitate and try to outdo. But it always backfires. Like I said last time, when Jesus Christ was born, as the son of God, when, when he was born, sent on earth. Also, Satan had his seed. He had his seed, which was what? Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot. And that's why he talks about, 
you know, during the Last Supper, Jesus says, amongst you there's a devil. Also, Judas was the seed. He was a seed not from God, but from the Antichrist. That's what, that's, that, in fact, that was one of the first Antichrists, Judas Iscariot. That's why Jesus gave him the bread and told him, go do what you're supposed to do quickly. And the book of John talks about little children. I warn you, for we are living in the end times. For Antichrists have already risen. They are little Antichrists. He talks about little Antichrists. You got to know that people, no matter what gospel you give them, they can never submit. Because why? They have the seed. Just as there's, this, there's the seed of God here or now, there's the seed of the Antichrist. The same way there's the seed of God. I repeat again. In the marketplace, at your workplace, uh, your co-workers, I don't know who you're dealing with. The same way there's the seed of God, there's also the seed of the Antichrist, which the Bible warns us in the end times, in the latter times. The seed of the Antichrist, they're working daily, day and night, effortlessly, without resting, to fulfill the agenda of the Antichrist. Right? Some of them are in the medical industry. Some of them are in the science, everything to do with science. Some of them are astronomists. Some of them are philosophers. Some of them are anthropologists. Some of them are psychologists. Psychology, when I say psychology in quotes, an evil kind of psychology, like control. The study of psychology itself, you know, if you, if you love psychology, psychology is good if it can help. But... Now, the psychology that's out there is to control. It's a narcissistic kind of psychology. It's a psychology whereby you, you have to always constantly and consciously read people's body language in the room. So you can't sit still. You're constantly trying to read people. Psychology is demonic. When misused, in fact, the origin of psychology is the study of human. It's like... It's like whoever came up with it, whoever came up with it, everything has its own origin. Everything you see on earth that is opposite to God had its own good meaning in the beginning. Everything that you see that's opposite. The same way there's anger. The same way there is anger. Anger is not good. Then there is what we call evil anger. Now watch this. There's also holy anger. That's why Jesus flipped the table. He flipped the tables in Jerusalem. He was angry. He did ta -ta -ta -ta, whatever he did. Because he was angry. That's holy anger. There is demonic anger. There is holy laughter. There is demonic laughter. <laughs> you see someone laughing, but they're getting ready to get done with you. You know, you've seen it many times in shows, on TV. Someone, he, he murdered everybody. And he went to court. He was laughing. Psycho. He was laughing. <laughs> You want like what, what? Why are you laughing? Looking at the victim's parents and laughing, yeah. So everything has its own opposite. Everything. See, a lot of things were corrupted. Now, I want to go a little bit deeper because some of you, God is opening doors for golden businesses in these end times that we're living in that will facilitate you. If things are not are coming, are becoming harsh and becoming tougher in these times we're living in. But God is going to facilitate you and give you wisdom on how to be independent. There's a difference of having a job and working. The Bible talks about working, being a hard worker, not having a job. You know, hard working. All right. May you have work, not a job. A job limits you. Praise God. Work does not limit you. You know, you work when you want to work. You work and you take a break when you're supposed to take a break. But a job uh, is a little bit different. Praise God. Let God give you grace tonight. Let God give you grace. So I want to talk about the things, uh, you know, uh, that the Spirit of, has put in my heart tonight. So six. Now you see why it's called 666. It's a mockery of who God is. Six is a number of God. And I said last time, 13 is also a number of God. 13, 13. People have demonized it in numerology. Different kind of like, people from, uh, you know, different kind of, um, 
religions, there are many. You, if we start naming, we won't finish. But people believe in different kind of myths that 16 or 13 or this, this, this astrological nonsense means, oh, dark cloud. No, 13 was a number of Christ. 13, 13. He was the 13th one and he had 12 disciples. So 13 is not demonic. So next time you hear, oh, Friday the 13th or here November the 13th, oh, it's demonic. No. The work of the enemy is always to corrupt what was created by God. And that's what he's been doing. And humanity has always been corrupted as time goes. All right. So I want to talk about the system of the beast. Now, if you read Revelation 13, the same one I read earlier on, it talks about the mark of the beast. You'll be forced to receive it in your hand and on, on your forehead. No one will buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast. Now the hand, when we talk about receiving the mark in your hand, it talks about work. It talks about jobs. The jobs that we have out there, out here today, are not just jobs. There are jobs now that are not just jobs. What, what these jobs are causing is fear. You wake up in the morning, you say, I'm going to work. You're going to work. But as soon as you arrive there, instead of having a good time, you're having anxiety all day. Now, I'm not saying that you should stand up now and quit and leave everything. No. What I'm basically saying is God is giving you a grace period. He's giving you a grace period. Time. Time for you to have revelation of what you're supposed to do. God is giving you time for you to manage your schedule, for your schedule not to be managed. Did you hear what I said? God is giving you time. And if you pray, God will show you where to take your seed and plant. God is giving you time. So there's grace. But if you talk about um, and uh, the mark of the beast, uh, uh, Revelation 13 again, we talk about the right hand. Why the right hand? The right hand is so symbolic in the book of Revelation. Receiving the mark on the right hand. Meaning everything we do today. You can't work if you don't it's like your hands. Your hands are a symbol of your work, your labor. You know, uh, uh, everything we have, construction, buildings. Nobody build a building with their legs. <laughs> Did you see anybody building a house, an architecture, a, you know, drawing a map and how a house or a building is supposed to be with the legs? No. The hands is a symbol of work. Your hands is a symbol of work. So your work, so the system... Right now in this time that we're living in, is binding people and making them slaves like this. Just That's just the introduction of the system of the beast. It's just the introduction of the system of the beast. Did you hear what I said? It's just the introduction. We're in the introduction st stages. So this is what the Lord is saying. Let him give you grace that you have power over your time. Your time doesn't have power over you. God wants you to have power over your time, not your time to have power over you. Did you hear what I said? He wants you to have power over time, not the time to have power over you. So when you are under a schedule, the time has power over you. And you cannot. It's very difficult to fulfill certain things that God wants you to fulfill. Very difficult. So may God give you grace tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, because I feel like there's an anointing of deliverance, and some of you, God is about to reveal certain jobs, certain things he wants you guys to get in. Some of you, there are certain jobs, certain things God wants you to get in. Businesses, business ideas, uh, revelation on what to do, who to connect with. Let the Lord make this night a night of deliverance and revelation. Mm. The other one, he says, they receive it where? On their forehead. The symbol of the forehead is what's happening right now. You see your mind. Mind control. He talks about mind control. This is pure mind control. Receiving it on your forehead. Now, today we are living in a time whereby, if I begin with social media. Social media is great. It's nice. But do you know these are the two things? 
the two things in these end times that are being used. The pharmaceutical companies and social media is what is being used to control. This is the warfare people are having today. Now, when we talk about social media, we talk about mind control. A lot of these apps we see like Snapchat. We see like, let's begin with TikTok. You might think it's just TikTok, but it's not TikTok. Why is it called TikTok? It sounds like time. Tick, talk, TikTok. The owner and the, the one who, the creator of TikTok is from Asia, China. The creator of TikTok is from China, I repeat. And it has a symbol of music, like almost like a letter, is it D or something like this? Like a symbol of music. And they said the one who created the logo was inspired in a rock concert at night. And he created the logo of TikTok. So, what is this about TikTok? There's nothing wrong if TikTok is a blessing to you. But what it does is more damage than blessing you. TikTok. TikTok time. TikTok. Now, every youth we have now, I mean... Basically, they cannot stay away from their phones. They have to get a hold of their phones and keep scrolling. Now, the more you scroll, you're not just scrolling. You're actually addicted. You're actually addicted and your fingers cannot stay still. And your time is being stolen. So you're doing this. By the time you get off TikTok... Your mind is so much overworked that you're tired. Some of you are not tired just by nature. Not because you haven't eaten. Not because you haven't drunk. No. Some of us or some of you are tired because your mind has been over exhausted. It has been overworked until you have headaches. Why? It is your phone causing you to have headaches. So, this is part of the mark of the system of the beast, whereby you cannot concentrate. It's an addiction. It's worse than even marijuana. It's worse than even alcohol. It's worse than, I don't even know how to tell you, the worst drug you could ever think of. It's, it's, it literally hypnotizes you. So after one video, you want to look at another video. After another video, you want to move to another video. Why you keep moving? Why you keep moving? So it's killing your creativity. Now, let's talk about the social media, social, social um, media, social media warfare. Now, the social media warfare recently in America, they wanted to ban TikTok. Why did they go in the Congress and they wanted to ban TikTok? Because Americans realized that TikTok is being used as a weapon. It has been weaponized. It has been used as a weapon. Let me, I hope you're listening to me. Let me repeat again. TikTok, the TikTok in China and the TikTok in America is different. The origin of TikTok is, TikTok is where? Chinese. Chinese created from China, invented there. Their TikTok helps their students learn and grow. Their kids are learning with their TikTok. They're learning about astronomy. They're learning about science. They're learning about things that makes them innovate and, you know, like evolve psychologically. That's the TikTok in China. The TikTok in America is nothing but kids twerking. You just see girls twerking 24 hours, shaking the booty and, oh, oh praise God. I said it. Hallelujah. Praise God. So kids uh, constantly, you see a kid, 15 years old, a private TikTok, right? What do we call it? Special fun, fun? Only fans, TikTok. Now, this is taking a lot of time, not only in the United States. Now, now look, look at the agenda here. Africa, other parts of the world, TikTok is different from China. The one in China, you grow, you learn, 
You educate yourself. You learn about animals. If you want to be somebody who's going to take care of animals, you learn. It's a learning platform. So when Americans discovered recently in Congress, they wanted to vote it out. But there are those who are saying, no, 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 no. But there are those who have discovered why the TikTok in America is different from China. It's economical warfare. As our children are sleeping and always waking up, dancing and shaking themselves all around, the Chinese are growing. Now we see the yen. <laughs> the Chinese economy is going boom. The yen has beat the dollar. But how did it begin first? Coronavirus. Let's go back again. COVID-19. TikTok during the pandemic picked up so hard. But it did not pick up in America to be just a good platform for you to become a so-called celebrity in your own head. It picked up in America to make American youth sleep. And that's what's happening to our American youth. Most of them, zero in the head. In school, in class, TikTok. Students are failing. Do you know how Americans are failing in school? Like, I mean, kids, I mean, in college, in, uh, in, in high school. TikTok has really damaged for the past eight years. It has re literally backwards. It has made a lot of kids here in the United States go backwards. Why? Because they're addicted. They can't talk to their folks. They're no social, you know, like can't talk. But in China, it's different. The algorithm is different. The data is different. But why is this happening? What does this have to do with the end times? Because mm, America is in Bible prophecy. Now, China represents the dragon. America represents the eagle. So when we see Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, WhatsApp, you know, having a lot of court issues going on. This is deeper than what we think. There's social media warfare. The dragon wants to take over. China represents the dragon. And now the dragon has economically already taken over. The dollar has fallen. The dragon has taken over. But how did it begin? How comes the dollar fell? What, what was our youth doing when the dollar was falling? On TikTok. <laughs> Kids ones, uh, aspiring doctors, economists, and all that. They're busy on TikTok. You know, just inboxing each other, TikTok, looking at funny videos. You know, it's like literally it has made kids who think they could not become anything. Overnight, they blew up, becoming superstars, celebrities. You see a kid impersonating themselves as a celebrity who's famous. Only to just cloud chase and become TikTok famous. While Asia is rising. The dragon has risen. So what is God saying? God is saying this is social media warfare now. China is using social media warfare. And it has overtaken. Now, China was supposed to become the superpower in 20... Already, in 20... 20 was supposed to have already taken over but how comes china did not take over the covid 19 was a weapon now we switch to the pharmaceutical company the pharmaceutical company in america attacked the economy of china that's what we hear who won and so the chinese who knew what was going on they began giving a lot of foreigners in China warfare. I've had family in China. It was very difficult for them to survive. Whether you are from another country, UK, Chinese were not giving anybody. Like before the doctor sees you, it doesn't matter where you come from, a foreign country. Foreigners were being abused so bad. Why? The Chinese were angry. So they have retaliated with TikTok. So we see American government wants to ban TikTok. Because it's a psychological warfare. Now the dragon has taken over. What's happening? Russia. All that is under the dragon. Part of Russia is Asia. Part of Russia. If you look at Russia, the demographics, part of Russia is Asia. 
not all of Russia is Europe's. Part of it probably is Europe, part of it, most of it, I believe, is Asia. So we're living in a time whereby we are at war. We are at war with social media. And it is hypnotizing a lot of people. Creativity is dying. Them hubs. If you have Snapchat, man, unless you're using your Instagram, unless you're using these things to innovate yourself, delete them. Unless it's for, for innovation, creativity, delete it. You don't need it on your phone. What it's doing is draining you. It's making you like a zombie. You're becoming a zombie without knowing. After work, you're on social media. Your life is going away while you're looking at your phone. Your time is being stolen with the system of the beast. Your mind, where's your mind? You're always scrolling. Your mind, you don't have your soul. Your soul is inside that. And that's why some of you, when someone touches your phone, you want to kill someone. You feel like, why are you touching my phone? Why? Because your soul is there. <laughs> it's not like you're doing anything with your phone. But when someone just gets close to your phone, I've seen someone jump out of a car just for a phone because the phone dropped. <laughs> ah, you didn't cast this. The soul is in, inside that Android. The soul is inside that iPhone. These devices we see, the phones are good, but the phones have become one of the biggest weapons in the end times. And the apps that are there now, deadly. Now you see a, a, a woman who puts a filter and posts on social media. Ooh, you imagine you look like Cinderella. That's madness. <laughs> That's pure craziness. Ah, now you have a crown. Who told you you have a crown? And that's the problem today. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. But this is what's going on. <laughs> and we gotta go back to seriousness. <laughs> is it true? <laughs> so, so, it's a form of insanity, but kind of settled. You know? Ah! Putting like, overdoing it. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the second thing I'm talking about, population control. John 16 to it says, they will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that they are making God service. They are doing God a service while killing you. Now, Christianity is under persecution big time. In Islam, they don't mock it. You cannot mock Allah. Nobody does that. But go on Netflix. You see the comedy Jesus, the Jesus jumping in robes. With the thorns in the head. Why, why is Christianity mocked a lot? Why is um, Christ, the name of Jesus, mocked a lot? You know, anything that is mocked has truth in it. Anything that is fought has truth in it. People will never fight you so hard if you don't have truth in you. So Christianity is being is being uh, is under attack big time so there's another thing i, I want to talk about is population control population control is a big 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 issue today i repeat again population control is happening with pharmaceutical companies i mean making things that that i that that we humans are going and we're ingesting is just that's why you know the bible says you shall eat poison and you shall not die meaning like you shall eat it. Most of you here have eaten poison that is good enough to take you six feet under. The food we have eaten is just nothing but poison. And that's why the Bible tells us, you shall eat poison, but you shall not die. So the first pharmaceutical companies are depopulating, but not, don't, not depopulating just a believer. A believer who serves God, you can't be depopulated. If you have a relationship with God, you can't be killed. You can't kill you can't kill a believer. A believer can't just be killed like that. But those who are not believers, some of you have relatives who are dying, you know, young. You hear cancer, crazy fibroid, you know, things eating them up inside and out. And you wonder like, what is this? Because there's a population control going on, as you're speaking. They want the population of the earth to be about 10 million, 6 million. Different people have their own different survey. And that's what they want. They want to depopulate. And that's what's happening 
And that's why there is designer babies. Designer babies are babies that now, instead of a woman conceiving, you can get the eggs, your eggs and whatever, you know, put it in a special lab. And now the child is grown. This, this, because now this, this is what they call baby breeding, breeding babies. You know, women are not going to give birth anymore. The world is waxing cold, big time. Uh, it's going to be children who are incubated and you watch a child and you watch the progress as your baby is growing. Go check it out. Designer babies. Designer babies. Designer babies are real. They don't want nothing to do with, con con you know, conceiving. Why? Because the DNA is being altered. Now, these designer babies that are going to be born are not just going to be normal babies. They have even done a research that they want these children to have supernatural abilities. Like a child who can see in the dark. They see it just like a cat. They're doing all kinds of tests with designer babies. A child, they even tell you what you want your child to come out like. You choose the type of body your child should come out with. You know, if you, you want your child to be athletic, you choose an athletic gene. So your child, and they tamper with the genes. Your child grows. Your child at the age of 10 can run like someone who's around 25 years old. Speed. Superhuman. Super soldiers. This is what's happening. They're doing it in the lab like every day. Oh, yes. It's nothing. It's already happening. This is not conspiracy theory. This is the reality. Praise God. Tonight, may the Lord Jesus deliver you and give you grace. I repeat, and I quote this scripture, you shall eat poison and you shall not die. I repeat, and I quote this scripture, you shall eat poison. This is the promise of the Lord, and you shall not die. It didn't say you might eat poison. The Lord Jesus warned us in the scriptures, you will eat poison and you will not die. So meaning most of us have been a victim you find yourself sick. You're wondering what's going on. It's poison. And then for all of a sudden, you wake up, you're, you're feeling well. It was poison. God just saved you from poison. And some of you have experienced this. Women, men, you wake up your legs. It's like you don't feel your legs poison. Constantly, there's a deep population happening. Let the Lord Jesus deliver you. And I declare and decree, you will not just find a job. You will find work. And you will be self-employed in these end times. Let the Lord Jesus deliver you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open up your heart and start praying. Mm. Father, touch. I see we have a couple of people online here on social media live. Mm. I see Sierra right here. And I see Williams. I see Mama D. I see... Jacob, when I see Mariah right here, more grace upon you. May God give you golden business ideas in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I see King over here. Mm. I see Maeva Pearl. I see Dinka. More grace. I see Joyce online on social media live. And let the Lord be glorified tonight. I see Stephen. I see Zoe right here. Mm. I see, I see your people, God. I see Tara. Thank you, Lord, for the life of Cassius. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the life of joy. You have done something good in the life of joy. Mm. Thank you for Edith. Mm. Thank you for Edith. Bless her, Lord. Give her grace. Give her grace, Lord. Give her grace. Give her grace. Mm. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for renewing contracts someone's contract is being renewed mm -hmm. ah mm. who is this i'm seeing in a job like a medical and i see god renewing your contract mm. whatsoever was taken away from you is being restored i see restoration in the mighty name of jesus May God help you know what to do. May you know what to do in these end times and how to survive. We are living in dangerous times, but we serve a living God. There's going to be a Passover. There's already a Passover taking place. The saints are experiencing a Passover. What was supposed to kill you will not kill you. 
Hallelujah. If it was to kill you and you did not die, then it means you can't die. You have the life of God in you. Mm. You have the life of God in you. You have the life of God in you. In Jesus Christ's name. Ah. I want to talk to someone tonight. Parabasia. How are you, Steve? How are you, uh, Zoe? How are you, Jacob? I see Mariah. Praise God. Mm. More grace upon you. You're having uh, ideas, Mariah. Very nice. Very nice ideas. Very nice ideas. You want to be totally independent from the system. It's very nice. You want to be in the, you want to be your own boss. You keep saying it. You know, you will have you you be your own boss. It will surely manifest. This is something I know. I know. I know. Mm. Praise God. It will manifest. I, I know this. Josh, the Lord is touching your wife right now. Mm -hmm. God is touching your wife. I feel the presence of God. God is touching your wife, Josh, right now. Mm -hmm. God is touching her stomach in Jesus' mighty name. No more blotting. No more blotting. Thank you, Jesus. Your wife is not going to be blotted anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is working on her. I break every mental depression over her life. She'll be able to sleep. She won't be scared of the dark. In Jesus' name. Amen. Your wife won't be tormented with darkness. When she sees... Darkness, you won't be tormented. Mm. Amen. We receive the prophet. I receive the prophet. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Josh, there's a miracle that happened. Uh, yes, prophet. What is this miracle that happened? I prophesied a couple of things. What happened? Prophet, um, you prophesied that, that we would get a car and, and through the blood of Jesus, we received the car. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I heard there's an angel. There was miracle money that took place. Miracle money during the last service on Friday. Miracle money. Yes, prophet. So I'm going to let my wife tell you. Okay. Yes, prophet. I, after service, we we prayed and, and, we, and, we, and we received... We received funds and we got a car, Prophet. After 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 service, um, I only had five dollars on my cash app, and my wife had I had four dollars on my cash app, and my wife had five dollars, and she cashed at me the five dollars, and we sent it to Sopar. And right after that, out of nowhere, while I was praying with Brother Miracle, my wife just checked her phone, and we had over sixteen hundred dollars sitting inside of her account. All right. Praise God. Now, now, glory be to Jesus. That is a miracle money. Miracle money. Listen, Jesus removed uh, money out of the coin of a fish. Out of the, out, out of the mouth of a fish. They didn't want to pay taxes. Jesus took a fish and removed the coin and he paid taxes. Miracles are real. Now, watch this. Miracles are going to start happening now. Now, 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 now. Uh, put it on the uh, big screen. <laughs> Something is going to happen. Miracles, as they have testified, miracles at this hour, this moment, are taking place now. Now. There are miracles happening. I want a testimony. We have done 90 days. Uh, put it on full. I've done 90 days. We are doing 90 days of prayer and fasting. 90 days. Uh, 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 in this 90 days, as somebody, is there a miracle that has happened? Because I minister to a couple of you. If there's a testimony, testify to glorify God. In this 90 days, I need a testimony. Somebody give me a testimony. That's one testimony. This is 90 days of prayer and fasting. That is a miracle right now. An angel manifested. It. An angel of God. Come on now. Listen to this. Somebody give me a testimony. If you're here, unmute your, your, your phone and give a testimony of the 90 days. I too, prophet. Um, 
This is Mama G. Okay. I too, um, the night uh, last Wednesday, um, I I made a blanket for somebody, and I I I tied off of the money that I made, and miracle money ended up in, in Papa G's account. Miracle um, money. Miracle money. Oh my goodness! Look at Jesus <laughs> from nowhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I did too. Wow. <laughs> This just happened like that. You tied to the That's ministry. Like you tied That's to the like, ministry. Yes. Wow. And, and I'm telling you, we were struggling up to that point, but we just, I just made up my mind years ago to trust the Lord you know, and not complain. And wow. when you do that, you know, it just happened. And I, he just overwhelms us over all the time. We are his children. We're sons of God. That's all I have to say. Glory be to God. Somebody clap for Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. I need another testimony. Somebody give me another testimony of the 90 days of prayer and fasting. Testify what God has done. Because we began this when? One month ago? Yes. One month ago. In this one month, we already got two testimonies. Revelation 12, 11 says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. Uh -huh. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. So there's something to do with the testimony. There's a miracle behind the testimony. Hallelujah. I'm looking for another testimony. Mm. Prophet. Hey, prophet. Okay, who am I talking to? Yeah. Who am I talking to? Carisha. Kerisha, who's Kerisha? Who, who's where, where? Josh? I'll I'll let her I'll let her go first, Prophet. Is this Josh talking? Yes, Prophet. Okay, tell uh, me. Mm. Um. So, since since last Wednesday, God has just changed my marriage around completely. Um, me and my wife are being more loving towards each other. We've been praying more. We've been reading our Bible more. Mm -hmm. And um, God has revealed something from my wife that she was holding from me. And um, she finally told me. And um, I was able to forgive her for it. But I was just so thankful that she wasn't carrying that burden no more. And um, just to see that, that, that God is moving inside of our marriage and inside of our life is just such a blessing. So there was supposed to be a divorce happening. Yes. There was supposed to be a divorce happening with divorce papers. Yes, prophet. But, but, but when you came at church last Wednesday, God changed all these things around. Because God mentioned the name of Bree in the service. Yes. Prophetically. So now, what do we do? We glorify God. Hallelujah. We glorify God for this miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Bree. I, I am seated right here. And there is an angel of God. Uh, yes, the angel called me said Angelos come up here and as I stood I went to a room of body body parts like body parts and as I arrived in one room there was a new leg I saw the angel of the Lord giving you a new left leg left leg a new left leg and suddenly a miracle took place and the Lord Jesus completely healed you. Yes. The leg was all the way from the left hip bone on the socket to down. And the Lord has done this with your nerve. He has reconstructed your nerve. Keisha. This is what I hear the Lord saying. Yes, prophet, that's true. Yes. It's completely reconstructed now. You're delivered now. You're delivered. 
You're delivered now. Now I want you to, I, I don't need to see you. By the mercy of the Lord Jesus, I want you to stand up and start moving your leg. Moving your leg. Because you've been wanting to work out, but that leg has stopped you. You know? Yes. Start moving your leg now. Move it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're healed in Jesus Christ name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we thank the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's glorify God. I'm, I'm hearing the Lord speaking to me again here. Uh, this is the 90 days. Is there any other testimony? Do not withhold the testimony. This is one month of the 90 days of prayer and fasting. Prophecy. <laughs> Who's this? Who's this? Is Zoe. Oh, praise God. All right. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to share. Uh, I actually submitted uh, almost exactly a month ago. I submitted a master's um, application. And I even forgot that I submitted it. And then um, they met with me last week. And I thought they just wanted to answer some questions or something. But um, they were welcoming me to the program. So I got accepted into the program. And I forgot I had applied to it. So I'm really excited to be able to advance um, in, in the things that I'm passionate about and in my purpose with maternal health and, and child health. So yeah, I'm really excited. I just wanted to share that. and. And yeah, I just I, I think it's a great testimony because I just did it and I and I let God do it. I even forgot that I did it instead of obsessing over it or anything. I just I just let God handle it and trusted that if it was meant to be that it would happen. Wow. Wow. Look at Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. In one month a testimony, a program, praise God, that is giving you grace has accepted you. Because God is not a man to be mocked. Glory be to God. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a great testimony right there. New season, new levels. The Lord has taken you higher. Let the Lord do it more and more and more. This is a miracle. This is a miracle. This is a miracle. In 90 days of prayer and fasting, you've been coming online and we've been praying. We've been praying. We've been praying a lot. And God is moving. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you, Zoe. <laughs> Is a blessing. Amen. Thank you. Wow. 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 Glory be to God. <laughs> I want to talk to somebody else. Somebody give it to me. Another testimony. That's Zoe right there. She's been in the 90 days of prayer and fasting. Father, I have a testimony. Who is this talking? This is Cynthia. This is um, Cynthia. Oh, Cynthia. Praise God. Yes, I spoke with you um, last year, no, sorry, last month, when I came out there to visit uh, the church, and um, you kept saying that I was going to move, that I, that I see new furniture, dishes, and everything, everything that you mentioned to me, everything that you said through the Spirit of God has come to pass, everything, I'm in a new address, I'm happy, um, so my favorite color, you mentioned my favorite color, and and you were just spot on with everything, everything wow. about moving, everything about dishes, you mentioned so much, and it is coming to pass, and it has come to pass, wow. and I give God all the praise, honor, and all the glory, and I thank wow. God for you, thank you, prophet. Amen, 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 glory be to God, wow, that's nothing but God. <laughs> I'd never seen you. I'd not seen you. God revealed the secrets of the heart and he made it come to pass. Glory be to God. Hey, I, I'm yes, yes. Wow. 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 <laughs> this is amazing. It's a great testimony. Glory be to God. That's a testimony. My goodness. We're in a period of one month now. Miracles are happening. Yes. More testimonies. More testimonies. Thyroid. My goodness. God is... Yes. I am healed. I went to the hospital and I went to the appointment for my thyroid. They said there's nothing there. 
And God said, I am healed. You said that I was healed. I am healed. I have no trace of cancer, nowhere. No more. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Oh, 90 <laughs> days of prayer and fasting. There's something God is doing. Hallelujah. Revelation 12, 11, I speak it again. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of the testimonies. Glory be to God, Cynthia. More grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I'm God ready. Bless you, oh, my goodness. I'm blessed. Come on now. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That's a great testimony from Cynthia. Somebody give me another testimony. I need another testimony. In this one month, something has happened. Who's talking? Praise God. Jaylo. All right, talk to me. I, when you deliver me from the spirit of anger, I've been having since I was a kid. Mm. Man, I'm at so much peace right now. Wow. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I ain't never felt this much peace in my life, man. I can't. I can't come to my. Can't come to a hope smash moment if I wanted to. <laughs> wow! Wow! It's, it's a blessing. Glory be to God. Ninety days of prayer and fasting. Something good is happening. The demon of anger can cause someone to lose favor. Because you might find yourself angry and now the divine connection is there. Now they back off, not because you're wicked, but because the demon is chasing them away. Now God is saying it's a new season. May you invest in property. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, I connect, I connect you with somebody to, uh, to give me a step further with that. You, you remember when I prophesied about that? Yeah, you did. Glory. You did. <laughs> I connected right with somebody that, that's helping me with that. Glory be to God. We glorify the Lord. I'm so excited. That's a great testimony. May the Lord elevate you in these 90 days of prayer and fasting. Something good is coming. Hallelujah. It is time to it is time to own properties now. Let's go. Somebody give me another testimony. Praise God. In one month. Who's this? It's cast. Okay, Cassius, praise God. Yeah, we we talked about it a little bit before, but um, I remember off the side. It was it was actually my birthday night, and um, you prophesied that I would be like submitting an audition through video, and um, that I'd be coming to LA soon. So um, I actually did. I I auditioned. I submitted it through video, and you said a door would open in Melrose, in like the Melrose area. So that's exactly where the audition took place when they had to come fly out. It was like, it was like two days later, I had to fly out like in an emergency and fly straight to LA. So, you know, the prophecy came to pass. Wow. And yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Look at Jesus. My goodness. Hey, hey, that's a testimony right there. God is good. We speak a blessing, we speak favor. More open doors. Amen. Lord, we thank you because in these 90 days of prayer and fasting, a miracle is coming in your house. A miracle is coming on your way. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name, Hallelujah. the God we serve is a God that works. He's not a Hallelujah. God who sleeps. He's a God who's alive. Hallelujah. He's our Father. Amen. He's our Savior. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Praise God. Come on now. Somebody give me another testimony. In this one month, we are, we are doing 90 days of or prayer and fasting. Some people will say, well, anyway, nothing is happening. But I know something is happening because God told me, he said, today I want you to collect testimonies of exactly 90 days because we've been praying. So, uh, so far, this is like seven testimonies, probably seven, six. I don't know. Let God be glorified. Mm. Amen. Somebody give me a testimony in one month. Praise God. Uh, prophet. Hmm. This is Mama D again. I have ah, to praise God. talk about my healing again. Uh -huh. And deliver me, and the, the, the Lord delivered me. The deliverer wow. <laughs> delivered my stomach. As soon as you said you saw something moving, that's when I felt pain. Wow. I felt my stomach was weird the day before, but in that instant when you located me, I felt I felt pain. It, you know, it was only momentarily. Wow. The Lord told me a long time ago that I am in Christ and nothing can harm me like you said. 
Wow. You know, and, it, and I was delivered right away. My stomach is so much better. Wow. So much better. Look at Jesus. Praise God. That's healing right there. Glory be to yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Come on now. Glory be to Jesus. I'm excited. Listen, let the Lord cover you with his blood. More grace, more favor. Long life in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give me a testimony. Come on now. <laughs> That's Mama D. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hey, Who's talking? It's free. Who's that? It's free. Free Bri Bri who, 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 who am I talking to? This, this is Josh's wife. Okay. Oh, just breathe. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, I also forgot to, to mention that praise God, Josh has not taken any medication since he's been delivered. Wait a minute. His Wait a minute. Problem. You said you said delivered. Josh came on Wednesday night at church, yeah. and I delivered him. There's a video, guys. If you saw it on social media, so when I prayed for him against mental depression, what happened? Yes, yes. His his, his attitude is so much better. He has not taken his pills. He's wow. we've been, been on one accord. Amen. Yeah. So I just want to talk to him about that as well. Ah, my goodness. I can't wait to see you guys on Wednesday. I feel like I'm seeing my new family now. Glory be to God. You guys are welcome. It's going to be fire. <laughs> uh, my goodness. I just wanted to say, um, God placed it on, on me and my wife's part to tie um, 10% of that miracle money that came in. Wow. So far, so Wednesday we would like to just tie one hundred and sixty dollars to this whole car. Um, Praise God. And, and, and we want to test with faith, knowing that that our prosper is far is gonna is going to make our soul. This is the reason to sow that seed of one hundred and sixty dollars. Um, of the one that we're blessed with. Wow. Let the Lord Jesus multiply your family and give you guys grace in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Can't wait to see you guys. It's going to be fire on Wednesday. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Lo thank you. Love you all. I, it seems, uh, no, it is, you, you know what? It seems I'm gonna be renewing some vows, eh? some wedding vows. Eh? So I'll begin with Joshua. I'll be, I'll be renewing some vows now. Come on now, some marriage vow. Hallelujah. Amen. This, this Amen. is what I sense in the spirit. Praise God. We gotta seal it by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody give me another testimony. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> this is one month, ninety days of prayer and fasting. Mm. Mm. Praise God. Mm. Hallelujah. It's done. Mm -hmm. who, who am I talking to? Paul, Paul e. Williams. Williams. Yeah. What's going on? I called you and what did I say? Yeah, it, was, it was all, all true. All true. Uh, and God has been moving, fortifying things. Breaking things off and everything. It's 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 just uh, amazing, amazing. Wow. 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 Praise God. I'm excited. I don't remember what I said, but glory be to God. God glory be to God. Uh uh God is bringing clarity in your household. In your house. Yeah. In Jesus' yeah. mighty name. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, as we're in this atmosphere of testimony, something good is happening, people of God. I want to pray for someone tonight. Mm, somebody give me the time. It's 11 19. I want to pray for someone tonight. Okay. Uh, someone needs prayer tonight. Receive prayer. I see on social media live. God bless you all. Share the live broadcast. To a couple of people, to 12 people coming to your spirit if you're on social media. 12 prophetic people coming to your spirit. 12 is the number of governance. Let God do something tonight. Mm. Let God do something tonight. 
What is this? Praise God. Mm, I see something good. Something good is happening. Maharada Zia Taladeshkia. Uh, Salome, you and your husband will open a children's home. You will open an orphanage. I receive it, man of God. Yeah, you told the Lord that uh, there's a money, money that you guys are waiting. If it comes, you will open an orphanage for children who mm -hmm. don't have parents. You want to give back to God like that. Yeah. You know, this is your desire, Salome. Mm -hmm. You've been faithful to God. Keep be faithful to God. Good things are coming. All right? Amen. Good, Amen. good things are coming. Now, listen, Salome. I yes. am here in Los Angeles. But in the yes. realms of the spirit, I see a vision yes. from God. And the vision I'm Hello? seeing... Can you hear me? Yes. I'm in Los Angeles. I can hear you. I'm in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. But in the realms of visions, I'm seeing a new TV. You guys are going to get a new TV in the house. There's a need mm -hmm. of a new TV. I don't know what happened to the other TV, the TV you guys have, but there's a need of a new TV in mm -hmm. the house. This TV is not just for luxury. This is for vision. A clear mm -hmm. vision is needed in mm -hmm. your household so that not one moment is a the next moment is B. The next moment is A. The next moment is B. No, 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 no. If it's A, it's going to be A. If it's B, it's going to be B. So I declare and decree it's going to be A. This is the revelation I'm having from God. This, this new TV represents new vision. New vision. Because it almost fell down. Something happened to the TV. The television. I don't know who was moving things around the house, but there's a need of a new TV for a new vision, new provision in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A woman called Wangari is going to uh, talk to you. I see Wangari. Wangari. Mm -hmm. Wangare, mm -hmm. Wangare. There's a connection with Wangare. I don't know who Wangare is, but I'm seeing her and I'm seeing finances. Uh -huh. And um, you expanding your shop. Wangare will help you expand your shop. Uh -huh. Wangare, Wangare. Yes. Mm. It's a woman you know. Let the Lord Jesus. Mm, lead you or now to expand I receive it amen so amen I receive it the last name is Wangari Wangari, Wangari. praise God yes uh -huh. yes it's a I receive it it's a business woman retail shop business she loves business a lot so let God guide you to know how to partner mm -hmm. so that everything I runs smoothly this is the word of the lord amen and uh, the second word when you go to your husband tell him god is giving him a new uh car okay a new a new car that has a good engine all right a car that is going to be like a van for missions with a strong engine, an SUV. Okay. For missions that he does. Mm. So it has happened now in the spirit. Receive it yeah. in the physical now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I receive it. Amen. Thank you. God bless. God bless you. Yeah. Shalom. God bless you. Shalom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, I'm excited, people of God. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be coming live by the grace of God. It's going to be deliverance. I want to pray for a couple of you. What I sense in my spirit, a couple of you need deliverance. Deliverance from difficult situations that causes sickness, pain, and delay. There's a need of deliverance from pain, from 
delays, sickness, um, confusion, depression, anger. Anger is causing you to chase away everyone. Why? It's not good. Some of you have demonic fear. You're always scared for no reason. You're scared you're going to be in trouble with the government. You're scared you'll be arrested. You're scared someone will break in your house. It's a demon. And if this spirit lives around you, it will cause you to have anger. So whenever you see someone has a lot of fear, the next spirit that follows is anger. You're so scared till you're angry. And some of you are suffering with this torment of fear. You can't trust people. You always think people are planning to, to hurt you. You always think that someone is planning to set you up. It's a mental mm, attack. Yeah. Tomorrow, God will deal with this because some things need to get off the way for God to have his way. Some things need to leave. Some spirits need to escape and go. Hallelujah. Mm. May God give you grace tonight. It is done in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let us pray. Okay. Let us pray. Uh, I want to close my service, but tomorrow is deliverance service. Invite someone, join me live and let God be glorified. Tomorrow is deliverance service. Invite someone, let someone be delivered tomorrow in Jesus' name. I wouldn't like to end this live broadcast without giving you a chance to be a blessing to the ministry. If you want to be a blessing to the ministry, you can be a blessing to the ministry and God is going to bless you. Indeed. We are going to put our account there of the website or the code. I don't know how it works, but uh, you will see it appear. The link of giving on social media and Zoom. As you bless, God is going to bless you. God is going to bless you. In Jesus Christ's name. Let the Lord lead you. The testimony of the miracle money is such, such a blessing. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. That really is just amazing. Wow. You hear of just God doing things where he gets involved. So how to give online, you can go the right there. Click on, click on our website. It will take you to giving options and God is going to bless you. Mm -hmm. God is going to bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, I want to pray a prayer of salvation. If you're here, you're not born again, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, you may repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, come before you as a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Today, Jesus Christ, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. Now, I don't know what church you go to, but if there is no salvation, there is no life. So if you pray that prayer, you are born again or you have rededicated your life back to Jesus. It's the most amazing miracle ever. So it's something I'll keep doing. Salvation is the key. Mm, some of you come online, you don't believe in prophecy, you believe in prophecy. If you don't believe in prophecy, believe in salvation. Hallelujah. If that's all you, you can believe in tonight, believe in that. But if you believe in prophecy, that God can speak. Glory be to God. But uh, that's the word I have tonight. So love you guys. Wednesday night is going to be very powerful. Uh, I won't be streaming it uh, on live. So if you live in Los Angeles, you may come. And the Lord is going to bless you. If you live in California, my church is located in Los Angeles, in California. Uh, for more information, you can go and inbox us. 
and you you will give you a new address we have a new address we do powerful night services every wednesday night I make a point of bringing somebody you never know how their life will be transformed so come invite somebody who doubts the power of god and god will manifest himself so glory be to god love you guys shalom shalom tomorrow is deliverance of fear i'm sensing the spirit of fear so strong over someone you're intelligent you're wise but the problem with you is fear you're always scared always anything that moves you scared any decision you want to make fear fear makes you cut off people you're disconnecting yourself from people you don't want to talk to people who god has put in your life because you're always scared you're scared to be judged you're scared to be so you're suffering you're suffering mm. please tomorrow i want to talk about the fear that consumes you and the fear that paralyzes you you know there are things once they leave you you're able to think straight you're able to make decisions quicker because you're not scared anymore all right so, mm -hmm. so god bless you guys shalom shalom love you guys uh, i'm gonna Thank you. i'm about to get good night everyone good night everyone shalom Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Love Shalom. you guys. <laughs> Shalom.